So you've heard of this thing called Tableau. You've seen a demo of it, or you've seen it in action, but now you're about to dive in for the first time. But before you do, you're probably wondering what all the hype is about. What can it do? What can't it do? Or maybe even more basic than that, what is Tableau? Well, on all of those, that's where I get involved. I'm Tim, AKA Tableau Tim, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the Tableau platform in under 10 minutes. In fact, if this is the first time you're hearing about Tableau, perfect. A few house rules for the video though. Be sure to check the description for links to some of the resources I mentioned. And lastly, if you get to the end of the video and you think you know someone who should watch it, share it with them. Then hit subscribe and enable alert so you don't miss out on the videos like this that I'll be releasing in the near future. It really helps my channel out. Okay, enough begging. Let's get stuck in. Tableau was founded in January 2003. It was an academic spin-off by Chris, Christian, and Pat. In an academic paper way back in 2002, they had a simple idea, and it was this. What if you had a tool that allowed you to view your business data in a visual way? Now, if you're hearing that, you're probably thinking, well, Excel existed, slash already does that. I can make charts, tables, and all sorts in Excel or any other tool, as a matter of fact. So what's different about Tableau? Well, put simply, one thing. Tableau's innovation was entirely focused around visual analysis. What does that mean? Okay, let's take one step back and envisage the typical workflow in every business that collects and uses data to make decisions. Let's say I run a superstore. We make sales every day and the data from these sales is stored in a database. A small business might just record these in a spreadsheet in an Excel file. Or if you're a web first company like a tech startup, you might make it available via the web or the cloud. At the end of each month, quarter, or even year, you'll want to review these cells to see how you're doing. In order to do that, you need to collect the data for the period you're looking at. Make sure it's correct and make sure there's no mistakes in it. Then hand it over to an analyst or a data scientist to do their thing. They, in turn, take the data and start exploring it to find insights. This might just mean they're looking for new trends and patterns or they may already have some questions that they want to answer. For example, did they meet the target this month? Once they have those questions and answers, it's time to share those insights with colleagues so decisions can be made about what to do next. They might build a basic report or in a large business, a dashboard with lots of perspectives contained in one view. In some really old school companies, you might even get packs with every report printed out for every single aspect of the business. Senior colleagues or decision makers will then use these reports to reflect on how the business has performed, set new targets or goals, make changes to targets, and then share these decisions back out to the business. Once these goals are shared, staff need to be able to monitor what's going on. So we end up going back full circle to the beginning and the cycle repeats. This process is typically termed as analytics or business intelligence. And whether you're a small one person outfit or a large corporate business with hundreds of thousands of employees, you have the same need. Okay, so we now understand the analytical process. Where does Tableau come into all of this? Well, the short answer is all of it. Let me explain. Let's take our cycle and rearrange it a little and take it from the top. Tableau has six key products, which aims to solve some of the problems outlined in a simple to use and connected platform. The first stage of this cycle where the store collects the data and keeps it safe is called transaction processing by nerds like me. It ensures the data from each purchase is captured, shipped to the customer, and then stored in a database. At the time of this recording, Tableau don't currently have a product that meets this need, no database as such, but you will often hear about a file type called the Tableau Data Extract, TDE in short, or more recently, Hyper. This is the file format Tableau likes to use to store and process data, and it has some smarts built into it. Check out my podcast on this topic in the description below. Okay, next up, the most important part of the process, connecting to your data and analyzing it. There's two steps here. Firstly, you see, most of the time, data is stored correctly. That's a good thing. But often, you might look at data and spot a mistake. For example, a transaction where the wrong item was scanned, or maybe a missing category. In order to handle this, you'll need to fix these mistakes either manually or in bulk at scale. In my field, that's called either data prep, data cleansing, or if you want to be a real consulting nerd, the process of handling this is called ETL, Extract, Transform, and Load. 
And for this, Tableau have a fairly new product in Tableau Prep Builder. It allows you to clean, shape, and transform your data by making it really easy to do things like pivoting your data, removing empty fields, replacing fields, or merging fields from different data sources. It does all of this with a visual and easy to understand interface. Again, I've done some basic intro videos on this channel, so check those out, but I'll be doing more in due course. Okay, we've cleaned our data and we're now ready to connect to it and analyze it. This is where Tableau Desktop and Tableau Public come in. This is by far the most valuable part of the cycle on Tableau's platform. Tableau Desktop allows you to connect to virtually any data format you can think of, from Excel all the way out to large multi-billion row databases and even web APIs. Once connected, you get the ability to start exploring your data using a really simple to understand innovative visual system. More on this in the future video, but for now, all you need to understand is Tableau Desktop is where analysts and business users can explore their data and build reports and dashboards that can be shared out across the organization. Tableau Public is free, does all the same things, but only allows you to share your reports and dashboards to Tableau Public, the Google Docs of the Tableau community. This is a great use case for charities, nonprofits, journalists, or local authorities who need to share their data with their community. Alongside this, Tableau Public is a great place for new users to find new ways of building reports and learn from others. Right, we know how to clean our data, we can connect to it and build reports and dashboards, but the issue is that analysis and those questions that need answering can't be done by just one person. In order to share these across the business, you're going to need several things. One, a safe and secure way to share this data. You wouldn't want someone to get access to your data that shouldn't have access. Number two, allow others to build on your work as an analyst and ask more questions with interactivity and the ability to build your own perspectives. Number three, a robust system that can withstand hundreds of users asking questions all at the same time. Number four, powerful and well-documented management source so your IT team can manage it without needing to require external consultants for small changes. Number five, the ability to run it internally in your company's data center or in the cloud. Tableau Server and Tableau Online meet these needs. They're both essentially the same, except Tableau Server gives you full access and control of your server hosted in your own data center, whereas Tableau Online is hosted by Tableau on your behalf, and they take care of making sure it runs smoothly. I'll dive into the difference in more detail, you guessed it, in a future video. Whilst most colleagues might work alongside you in the office or at their desk, others might be out and about on the go. And so Tableau have mobile apps that allow you to access reports and dashboards on the go on your mobile device. Because every business is different, Tableau recognizes that you might want to have Tableau products behave in a certain way, or you might want to connect Tableau to other systems. In the IT world, we typically do this using APIs, application programming interfaces. Think of it as a string and tools between lots of different systems, allowing them to communicate and work with each other. Tableau has over 20 APIs and tools you can explore. And yes, you guessed it. Of course, I'll cover this in more detail in a future video. Last, we have Tableau Reader. And the use case here is quite simple. It lets you open and interact with Tableau workbooks, but not edit or create them like Tableau Desktop or Tableau Public. This is used in instances where you just need to share a workbook with someone quickly who doesn't have access to your Tableau server. Word of caution here though, you don't get any of the security and governance control. So typically this isn't heavily used in instances where security and governance are paramount. We've covered the platform, but how often does Tableau add features or even products to its platform? In summary, all the time, this video will get old real fast. The general release cadence for new features in the Tableau platform is roughly every quarter. In fact, you can take part in betas and help improve the features by visiting beta.tableau.com. Patches and fixes to all their products are usually fixed immediately for urgent and security fixes, or generally monthly for patch fixes. And they support older versions going back roughly three years. But if you head to tableau.com forward slash support and check out the release notes, you can find all this information documented there. Okay, that's the entire platform. That's it. You've made it to the end of the video and you now know all the products and services available in the Tableau platform. I've included links in the description to Tableau product pages if you want to explore them in more detail. My next video will build on this and cover the different licensing models. 
each product and how to get started with Tableau. In order to make sure you don't miss out on these and more videos, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. And lastly, please share this video with others. It's a great way to support my channel and the work I do. I have no ads on the channel and I don't monetize my videos because most of what I've learned came through extremely generous members of the Tableau community. And so this is my way of giving back. I'm Tableau Tim and I'll catch you in the next video.